Hi friends, so glad you're back with me for another Art Class 2 project. Now remember, with all of these projects, they comprised of four lessons that you must watch in sequence. One, two, three, four. And today is lesson one. We're going to be talking about a really fabulous artist. In fact, he's a living American icon, Wayne Tebow. So let's talk about what you're going to need for today's lesson. You'll need two sheets of 11 by 14 Bristol paper, a good pencil, a really good white eraser, and a pair of scissors. And you might be saying, why do we have all these treats on the table? It looks like we're ready to have a party. Well, actually, these treats have a lot to do with what we're going to be talking about today. Back in the 1950s in the United Kingdom, and then in the 1960s here in the United States, an art movement had started that was called pop art. And pop art is short for popular art. And so artists of that time were experimenting by using images you'd find in popular culture, comic books, advertisements, and they would do large, beautiful paintings of those items with a lot of bright color, a lot of repetition, and it would be fine art. Now probably the most well-known pop artist was Andy Warhol, an American artist who used a lot of iconic images from that era. Here's one of Mickey Mouse. You probably know this image. And notice how Warhol repeated that image multiple times and used a lot of bright colors on a large canvas to make this piece of art. Now here's another Andy Warhol, and this is probably the most iconic image from the pop art movement, the Campbell Soup Can. It's a giant canvas of a single soup can. You probably recognize that. And when Andy Warhol was asked, why do a soup can? He said, because I eat it every day. It was something that was a regular object that was around him, very ordinary object, that he made into a piece of fine art. And that was what defined pop art. Now the next artist we're going to be talking about is Wayne Thiebaud. T-H-I-E-B-A-U-D. French name, and it's pronounced Thiebaud. Now Wayne Thiebaud is still alive today. He lives in San Francisco. He was born in 1920, and he had excellent skills as an illustrator and an artist, and he, during the pop art movement, also took something that was an ordinary object and through repetition and a lot of color made it into amazing imagery. And that's why I have these sweets right here. Here's an image from Wayne Thiebaud called Pies. Look at this great canvas, really yummy. Thiebaud used thick layers of oil paint and the art principles of pattern, rhythm, repetition of a basic shape. It's just a big shelf of pies. Notice though that the pies on the top shelf look different than the pies on the second or the third or the fourth. Now here's another Wayne Thiebaud painting, one of my favorites called Big Suckers from 1971. It's just a bunch of huge lollipops laying on the table. But notice also the spaces in between the lollipops where there's really strong shadows. Now that's an important visual element that you'll see that Wayne Thiebaud uses to fill up the negative space. Important for you to remember for our project as well. So we're going to be doing a watercolor painting of repeated sweets. We're just going to take some type of sweet that you like or that you think makes a really great shape and we're going to repeat it on a canvas and fill it in with watercolor in the style of Wayne Thiebaud. So here's one that I have right here of cupcakes. Now, the first step in selecting what it is you're going to do, you have to think of something that's a great shape. Here's a Wayne Tebow that I really like, it's gumball machines. Now all three gumball machines are the same except where he placed each gumball inside the globe is different. That probably took a lot of time. But that's okay. You might think just because something is repeated over and over, it must be easy. But Tebow was very careful to make sure that he provided a lot of interest in his paintings. He wanted the viewer to linger and look at it for a long time. Okay, so now we're going to get started by thinking of our shape that we want to do. But how do you choose? 
Well, the best way to start is to give yourself variety, and then you can choose at our next step. So, to get started, take one of your sheets of paper and a pencil and an eraser, and let's get drawing. Friends, if you remember when we were together in art class one, the first step for drawing is careful observation. Take the time to really look. Now, there's probably not a really straight line in any of these suites, but I can see some really interesting shapes already. Depending on the angle that you view this pie, you'll notice, kind of like a pizza slice or a bicycle seat, it's really kind of a rounded triangle. And I want to make sure if I do a slice of pie that I really see that triangle shape. I also see that this particular piece of pie has two distinct layers, and the top one has a lot of texture and variety in just the way it's shaped. You might say, well, a donut, pretty boring shape, it's just round. Yes, but the frosting that's on the donut, the way it drips down on the side of the donut creates interesting lines and shapes, and you can show how thick the donut is and the hole in the center. So you actually have a lot of opportunity to show shape. Now this is my favorite, the cupcake. You can do a lot with the cupcake. We have the paper on the bottom that has the fluting or the pleats and then the batter itself, and of course, the frosting on top. You could make it as tall and as different as you want. And this has some extra details, like the confetti sprinkles and the cherry on top. We're actually going to do a lot of different shapes on one piece of paper. After we've drawn those shapes, we're going to cut them out so that we have some options for when we go to our final watercolor piece. So the first thing I'm going to do is this layer cake. That's probably the easiest way to start. And so I'm going to start with the line at the bottom. Now why don't you draw along with me, or you can watch until we get to a treat that you might want to draw. I'm going to start in a corner because I want to fit a couple on the one page. Remember, this is not our final drawing. This is just our first step. So I can see that this probably starts off like a square. So I'll draw a line. Remember, draw your lines lightly so that you can erase. The eraser is your best friend. I'm just drawing a little darker so you can see it on camera. What about size? Well, for this project, we know we have to repeat, which means they have to fit on a page. So when you're doing your individual treats for our sample page, you're going to think about the size of your fist. That's about the size you want to make everything. So I'm going to draw kind of a square, but on an angle. And I know that this layer has a layer of frosting in the middle, so it would be like that. Well, that doesn't look very yummy yet. The best part is the frosting on the back of this layer cake and at the top has some thickness to it, and it's not going to be a straight line. So here's where you can make it bumpy and wavy as thick as you want. This is the top layer, and then lots of frosting. But we know it's a slice that kind of has a triangular shape, so I bring it down to a point. This is where I take my eraser. I want it to look like it's thick with icing, so I make it a ridged line, like that. Same thing with this layer in the middle. A little too straight. Let's make it oozy and bumpy, right, like there's a lot of frosting in the middle, even some that's bulging out there. And the cake that's on the end, you know when you slice a cake, some crumbs kind of come off. We're going to make that just a little, not quite perfectly straight either. See how quick that was? Just a quick layer cake. That was probably the easiest one to draw. All right, let's try the donut. Now, a donut is round if you're looking at it from right on the very top. But that's not how we want to show it in our painting. So, we're going to make an ellipse. If you remember from art class one, we talked about that an ellipse is how a circle is viewed from the side, right? So, over here on this corner, remember to keep your size about the size of a fist. Draw an ellipse like this. Now, in the center, same thing, I'm going to draw another ellipse, which would be the center of my donut. 
But this donut is a nice, thick, tall donut with lots of drippy icing. So from the bottom edge of this ellipse, I'm going to draw another ellipse that comes down from the sides. Now that looks a little too much like a hockey puck. We want to make sure it really looks like pastry. So we go back to the eraser and we round out as much as we can. And this part, which is going to be the frosting, is going to be bumpy, right? It has texture, it has thickness. And I want to show those great drips of frosting. So now I'm going to drip down. Can you see it from that line? That would be the frosting dripping down. And this is going to be kind of bumpy as it goes around. And I can erase then my original ellipse line that I don't need. Now what about this center hole? Hmm, that's a little tricky. It's an actual hole, but there's depth down there because we have the uh, frosting. So really, this bottom of this center ellipse here, I'm simply going to make it bumpy there and keep that line very light. Erase the lines we don't need. And there we have our donut. Okay, what's next? How about a piece of pie? You know, I already have something that's triangular shaped. What about ice cream? Well, I couldn't bring ice cream into the studio because it would melt, but it's a great shape. Think about it. Whether you use a sugar cone like this, which has this long pointy triangle, or the other style. I happen to have these in my cabinet. These are the cake kind of cones that have the flat bottom. I think that's a great shape, especially with the scoop on the top. See, you don't always have to have things right in front of you to draw them. You probably have a great memory. You've eaten enough ice cream cones. You could probably try it. So let's do an ice cream cone together. Again, I want to watch my size that I don't get too much bigger than my fist or the palm of my hand so that I can keep it in here. So I'm going to start with the bottom of a ice cream cone. I think I'm going to do this style here. So I do the two sides that are the bottom. They're not exactly straight up and down. You can follow along with me. They flare out just a little bit with a curved line at the bottom. Well, there's that broader part of the cake cup that holds that giant scoop. I don't know about you, but I like a big scoop of ice cream. So I'm going to make another line, but it's going to be wider. Think of a bucket, but the top of the bucket is a little bigger. And now those two sides flare out even wider. Can you see that? Now very lightly draw in the line that would be the top of the cone. You're not going to see that because the ice cream is going to rest on there. So this is actually a little ridge. I'm not going to worry about putting in too much detail, my friends, because that comes at the second step when we're drawing our final drawing. Right now, we're trying to get our basic shape. So we know that a scooper that puts on the ice cream is a big round bowl. So we're going to make a nice round shape on the top here. But we also know that there's always too much ice cream that fits in the scoop. So the ice cream that kind of bulges out like so. Oh, let's put a cherry on there. That looks great. So now we have a basic shape for ice cream. Now there's probably some type of waffling or some type of pattern, but we don't need to worry about that for our basic shape. That's a pretty good shape. And our last one we're going to try together, and of course there's much more that you can try, is our cupcake. Now a cupcake is a great shape. Again, it has a, a slightly rounded bottom, but it's a little wider. And the sides are almost straight up and down, but not quite. They flare out just a little bit. And let's just put in the uh, muffin top of the cake batter before the frosting is on. So that would be like this, and it would probably overflow just a little bit. Like so. And here's the best part. You're the artist. You can make all the choices you want about 
how much frosting to put on and how tall and what kinds of yummy decorations you can put on the top. It doesn't have to be exactly like the model you have in front of you or that could be absolutely perfect. So I want to show lots of frosting on this cupcake. And frosting is never flat like you painted it or put it on with magic marker. It has thickness and depth and texture. And because I love cherries, we're going to put a cherry in the top. The bottom of the cupcake probably has that paper that's fluted, which means you would draw these lines on the bottom vertical lines that show the kind of the cake cup. And so there you have quite a few shapes already. Now friends, you could do a popsicle which has a stick. That's an interesting shape. See how there's three popsicles here with the stick? It makes a great shadow too. You could do a wrapped piece of candy. Maybe there's a favorite treat that you have that you really want to do. The key is to make the shape interesting. And that might make you change the angle with which you look at it. Like a flat candy bar is just a rectangle, not really an exciting shape. But if you can figure out a way to make it an exciting shape, that's the key for part of our repeated sweets. You'll notice when I was doing the cupcake or even the donut, anything that had frosting on it, I drew the cake first and then the frosting after. You know, some portrait artists do this too. Before they put hair on their model when they're painting or drawing, they imagine the skull bald. And that gives them the opportunity to check the shape first before they put on the thickness of the hair. So I did the same thing. I made the cake first before I put on the frosting then I'm sure that I have the right shape. These are all pretty unique and I bet you are going to pick out a treat different than someone next to you or someone near you or someone else who's doing this project. That's because we're all unique. We all have different likes. Some people don't like pie or don't eat donuts. and Some people really don't care for ice cream. That's the cool thing about us. We are made uniquely. You know, that reminds me of some scripture that I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians 12. It's about how we're all different and we all have different talents and gifts that we can use to help each other. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Isn't that cool? God gave us all a unique gift and a way that we can use it in the world. So I expect that every time I see one of your pieces of art, they're going to be different than mine and different than your friends. And that's the way it's supposed to be. You'll notice that Wayne Tebow, even though he was a pop artist of the 60s, was very different from Andy Warhol a peer who was also a pop artist from the 60s. Okay, so now what do we do with these treats? Well, the next step is to cut them out. Let me give you a tip about cutting things out. I have four different shapes here and I need to cut them all out. But the first thing I'm going to do, friends, and I'd like you to do this too, is I'm going to cut my paper into four sections. I'm not doing each individual shape yet. It's kind of hard to work cutting with a large piece of paper because the best way to cut is to keep your scissors stable and turn the paper. And so it's easier to do if the paper's small. So as I'm cutting, you should be cutting too and you can listen to me as I talk about what's going to happen next. See this shape that we have is called a motif. That's another French word. And motif simply means a repeated shape that's used in a pattern. Perhaps you have something around you that has a motif on your wallpaper or on your upholstery. Just take a look around. It could be leaves, flower, a stripe. That's a motif. That phrase motif or word is used in writing and in music as well. Something that's repeated over and over. Perhaps you take piano lessons and you've recognize when there's a phrase that you play that is repeated over and over in the composition. That's a motif. So see, there's my donut. 
Now when you cut, friends, for this project, you're going to cut right on the lines. Don't leave space or what we call bubble cutting. You're actually going to cut on the lines. Yeah. And you say, oh no, Miss Pat, I'm not good at cutting. Well, take your time. This is important that you take your time because this is an important step in our process. All of them are important. You don't want to rush through anything. So use scissors that work for you, right-handed or left-handed, and take your time to cut along the lines. Now the good thing is, pastries are never perfectly straight. They're fluffy and bumpy and squiggly, and so if the lines aren't straight, that is fine. Okay, so now I'm going to cut around my layer cake piece. And this is where you really get a sense, my friends, if the shape is something you desire to use in your final project. Because when it's cut out, you can really get a sense of the shape. You can even turn it upside down so that you don't see the drawn lines part and just look at it for what it is as a shape. See, if I were to turn that upside down, I get a kind of a better idea of the shape. Now I'm going to cut my cupcake. You want to make sure that your eyes are able to be on the correct side of the scissors. And that's why I prefer to turn my paper and leave my scissors right where I can see them well. And since my paper is smaller, since I cut it, it's easier for me to handle. If you need to, my friends, if it takes you longer to cut than me, just pause the DVD, get all your cutting done, and then come back. Now, Wayne Tebow was asked the same question. Why did you do all those pastries and treats? He said he thought they were beautiful to look at, and he thought people would like to see them. And he's right. And when you see them in person, the paint looks good enough to eat. Okay, so now I'm on my last shape. of my ice cream cone. And you'll notice they're kind of all about the same size. If you made your shape too small, you can always draw it on the other side of your board before you do your cutting and try again. Now you never want to waste paper. That's why on this first sheet you can use both sides to draw as many treats as you like, it. but once you cut, that's the shape you're going to have. You know what, I don't think I'm going to use the cherry on the ice cream. I'm going to cut that out. See, as an artist, I can make my choices. I kind of like that shape the way it is. So here's our shapes. But you can have a lot more. And like I said, we don't have to draw in the detail just yet. So this was step one of our Wayne Tebow project, Repeated Sweets. Okay? And next time we're together, we're actually going to put them onto our final drawing as we move towards making our watercolor painting. So I look forward to seeing you next time in Lesson 2.